A healthier, happier life begins here. Welcome to Mercy Moments, a podcast by Mercy Health in association with True Chat. Did you know that there is a field of study focused on the art of living in a complex world or that it is based upon exhaustive research, cutting edge technology and professionals that are experts in their field, which in turn helps people build stronger families, lead better lives and make meaningful contributions to their communities. Thanks for tuning in today. I'm the host of Mercy Moments, T. Allen Sealer, coming to you from Champaign County here at Chew Chat Studios in Irvine, Ohio. Our guest today is a specialist in the field of family and consumer sciences and is currently the primary educator in Champaign County for the Ohio State Extension Program. Please welcome to the program, Sophia Carter. Sophia, welcome. Thank you. So uh, we always like to start out by asking our guests to tell a little bit about themselves. Uh, Sure. Um, I am a new Ohioan. Uh, I started my position in the county on July 1st of this year. And I actually live in Miami County and uh, it's on my spouse's family's farm. So I am a city girl uh, who has moved to the country. So what's your educational background? Um, I My degree is actually in international studies, but most of my professional positions that I've had, I think like most people after they graduate college, um, is, I would say, fell under more like community programming and support. So what made you des- decide to stay in the area though? Um, well, obviously my, my husband's family brought us back here to Ohio, but um, I decided to stay in the area because like Ohio says, and it's welcome sign, you can find it here. You really can. Um, And we have found a really good niche for ourselves in the community. I've found a really good niche for myself and what the community has to offer. So I decided that this is a good place for us to kind of make roots for our family. And what made you pursue a career in uh, family and consumer sciences? I definitely relate to a lot of the programming and the study that family and consumer sciences has to offer. Um, I enjoy participating in providing programming instruction and development, and I would consider myself kind of a lifelong student. So I really enjoy that aspect of always learning. And this is one of those professions where you're always learning. You know, now there's a lot of initiatives going on uh, in a typical extension program. Uh, But for today's discussion, I'd like to talk mostly about the family and consumer sciences portion of the program. So what exactly does that portion of the program do? So family and consumer sciences, I mean, it gives Ohioans the information, tools and resources for them to actively engage in creating conditions where they could thrive as individuals, as families and in their communities. So what's its mission? The mission is to explore how science-based knowledge can improve physical, social, and financial health. And and how does that fit in with like the other offerings like of the program? I would say all of the programs offered by um, FCS, which is Family and Consumer Sciences, or any extension program offered, they all kind of follow that same mission. Really, the objective of all the programming that we offer is education and community improvement. And and what are some of its specific goals? Well, my personal specific goal in taking this position is to kind of align the programming, the existing programming that we have developed at the state level to kind of match and meet the needs of the county and of the community and its residents. Now, are the offerings heavily influenced by agriculture? Because it, it seems it's that way. Honestly, <laughs> I don't know what in life is not really heavily influenced by agriculture. (laughs) Um, But no, joking aside, I mean, I would say that we are, we're not heavily influenced by it, but agriculture can always be found in some way in the programming offered in family and consumer sciences. You know, for example, I noticed that there's an initiative to, to preserve food, correct? Yes. So food preservation classes. Um, So we've noticed that there's, there's a rise in interest in learning the where and how of the food system. Um, which I think is great. Uh, We should all really take a strong interest in that. I often think of that that saying, farm to table. Um, Food preservation has been around for a long time. It's nothing new. But uh, through technology and agricultural development, the 
personal practice of food preservation is just not as common. But it's making a comeback. And whether it, it's as a novelty or a throwback to kind of old traditions or even a new approach still involves the need for science and safety. So our foods have changed. How we grow them has changed. Um, and the generational or traditional recipes and farm practices often don't take that into account. So we provide the training and resources so that people can kind of hold on to those recipes and traditions. But we provide them with the most up-to-date science and testing and food safety data. So you can kind of continue with these traditions and these techniques, but you're reducing the risk of any potential foodborne illness or injury. Now, some programs have a master gardening class as well, correct? Yes. So this program is actually coordinated by our agricultural and natural resources specialty at our extension office. So our master gardeners are a volunteer group. They're compromised of local residents. Interesting. And um, they're coordinated by that ANR educator at the county level. So each year we open the program for new volunteers to join and become a master gardener. And then they often volunteer their services in the community and they're a really great resource for like gardening knowledge and questions. And you can call our office anytime and even leave a message for one of our master gardeners and you can receive a follow up. And, and there's initiatives to promote food safety as well, correct? Yes. So for us um, and most extension offices, uh, the county will partner with their local health department and they will become typically like an instructor for Serve Safe. This is the food and alcohol safety training for food service professionals. Yeah. So I actually recently completed both the instructor and the proctor training for this program. And so I'll be working on a schedule and offering this in the new year. And who certifies that? Um, that's certified by the Ohio Department of Health. I see. Mm -hmm. So what other offerings uh, might there be in a program that we haven't touched on? Sure. Um, I mean, aside from health and wellness, and uh, we also have parenting classes healthy financing, um, of course, obviously agriculture, and then there's youth development. So who decides what's appropriate for a program? We typically have core programs at the extension office, but we're definitely influenced by uh, county health assessment data, information from the community health improvement plans, and other county organizations. Each educator in the extension office has control of their offerings, but we certainly take all of that information into account to decide kind of what we want to offer in the county specifically. So how are a lot of these, these new initiatives put into place? I would say potential ideas for new programs can be discussed among extension teams. Um, typically data, again, is pooled from the state and county resources or other local communities. And then... We'll have meetings, committees are often created and scheduled, budgets and funds are typically established, and then we'll kind of run a program, implement it, um, we review it, we survey the participants of the program, and then it's kind of decided after that if this is something that's going to be a recurring program or just kind of a one-off that we'll offer I see. the community, yeah. Well, that pretty much does it for the first half of the program. After the break, I'd like to talk more about the extension program at Ohio State and how many of its offerings positively affect the local communities. We'd like to take this time to remind our listeners that all of True Chat's podcasts help pursue a common goal, to educate people by providing honest, open, and respectful conversations and information. To learn more about Mercy Moments, listen to the recap at the end of the program, and to search for previous episodes or find ways to listen, please visit us at mercymoments.org. Are you in need of medical imaging services? Then look no further. For Mercy Health Urbana Hospital and its newly renovated Imaging and Women's Center, now offers everything from CT, MRI, and ultrasound to DEXA, and yes, even 3D mammography. Also, our team of board-certified radiologists will work with your prescriber to provide accurate and timely results. To learn more about medical imaging services, please visit us at mercy.com. Welcome back. So our topic today has been about family and consumer sciences, and our guest has been Sophia Carter. Sophia, welcome back. Thank you. So how exactly did Ohio State's Family and Consumer Sciences program get started? This is actually one of my favorite questions that I get asked um, often, and I kind of have to start with a little bit of history. So 
in 1862, um, wow. <laughs> yeah, I'm taking you back a little ways, uh, Congress passed the Morrell Act. So this essentially allowed the creation of a university in each state. And that university would provide education to citizens in agriculture and mechanical fields. So it was kind of very limited at that point. Um, they are called land-grant universities. So the Ohio State University is Ohio's land-grant university. And then some time passed, and in 1914, Congress passed the Smith and Lever Act to establish the cooperative extension services of now what you guys know as extension offices in each state. I see. So, um, and this is a state-by-state network of educators, and they provide, it's air quotes, kind of extended And that's where our name comes from, university knowledge to people throughout the county. Extensions are a partnership between the U.S. Department of Agriculture and the nation's land-grant universities. So as universities obviously diversify their offerings from strictly agriculture and mechanical fields, they needed to adapt and develop resources and knowledge traditionally outside of those fields. Family and consumer sciences is that evolution of these studies. So it's birthed out of the needs of each community and and what their needs are. So how are the local communities involved, though? Um, Their extension office is in all 88 counties. I see. Um, So we work together on shared research, data, and programming. And then in each of our local communities, we also work to partner with other organizations. So what are some of the biggest asks or needs from from the various communities? Well, each county might vary. It's all dependent on their data. But for Champaign County, we specifically need more community engagement and more options for public transportation. And we also need the expansion of healthcare resources for things like preventative care and yeah. mental health. So, and then we also, we are we were really in need of more physical activity opportunities and then more availability for fresh produce and healthy food options. So are there certain communities in general that need more attention than others? I would say our aging and youth communities are always the most vulnerable. So how does Ohio State's program differ from other programs, would you say? Yeah, this was, um, you know, for me, I would say that we're different and that our research and our offerings are always non-biased. And how has the program changed over the years? I think it's evolved along with the changes of at the local, national, and international level. It's heavily influenced by all of that. And then most of the fields of interest developed at the state level, each extension office will also adapt that and determine if it it's a need in their county. So where do you see it going in the next few years? Oh, gosh, I would I would hope that it would continue to change with the needs of the community and its residents. And I want to see people have more of a familiarity among um, all of the members of the community about what Extension Office is and the services that we have. Right. And that we will continue to partner with other organizations. So do you have an office here locally? Yes, we are um, at the Champaign County Government Building. So what's a typical day look like for you? Well, I'm a new educator, so I am definitely still in learning mode, but I will take the time to go out into the community and meet with residents and organizations and businesses. Just try to get the word out and, and meet with as many people as I possibly can. So how do the communities themselves get engaged? Well, they can certainly volunteer for any of the programs that we offer. We could always use support. And then um, spreading the word about extension and utilizing advertising and partnering with other programs as well. So how's the overall program administered? Um, In other words, who's in charge of what? So again, each educator is responsible for their own programming. So we have a lot of autonomy with that, which I think is fabulous. One of the reasons why I love my job. But we... um, and we can res- we can schedule recurring programs, or we can provide as needed programs. I see. And um, and then we can also host virtual programs now, and then as well as in person, which certainly in person is a preference, but we will accommodate virtual if necessary. So how's everything funded? So we are funded three ways: federal, state, and l- county level. So do you guys have a website? Yes, you can find us at champagne.osu.edu. Is that the best way to get a hold of you? It is, uh, or you can actually call our main office. Um, Our number is 937-484-1111. 
1526. You can certainly stop by our office, or if you'd like, you can send me an email if you're looking for family and consumer sciences information, and that's carter.1991 at osu.edu. So can you give us a rundown of some of the typical events you'd have throughout the year? Yeah, sure. So obviously my schedule is starting, um, it's just new and it's developing, but um Throughout the year, like we'd recently just did, actually I was participating in it today, uh, we did Breads for the Harvest. So that's a local youth program that we do in the school. It's actually a 4-H program. And so we make bread with students at the local school. Uh, we always are available if people are interested in having their canners tested. They can come to their extension office. So I can test their canner for them. We are at the time of the year where we're taking still applications that people are if people are interested in being a 4-H volunteer, you can certainly call the office and get more information about that 4-H program. There's a specific 4-H educator for that. And then um, we are also developing programs with our aging community as well. I am trying to go through actually Tai Chi training so that I can kind of offer that in our senior centers and um, other community organizations. So throughout the year, we kind of just go with what is in season, essentially. Um, so for agriculture, you know, that could be this is kind of the wind down time for local farmers. So this is where we'll do like pesticide applicator training and and things like that. So as the season picks up and the summer picks up, I mean, again, we'll do more youth programming related activities, more food preservation activities and things like that. So. And we'll always keep our calendar kind of up to date on our website and also our Facebook account too. Okay. Last couple of questions. What do you like best about your job? I, again, I love the autonomy about my position, but I like the collaboration that I get to have with other people. Um, I am certainly not trying to recreate the wheel in my position for any type of programming that's offered in the county. It's I, I want to work collaboratively with other people and um, the residents as well. So I, I thoroughly love that I can represent an institution that's continuously studying and researching um, and continuously learning and changing. So for me, that means that I'm providing the best type of programming for residents because there's very little room for stagnation. So what's the most challenging part of your job? Oh gosh, I would say, I think the most challenging and, and like most positions is, you know, sometimes there's a couple hoops that you may have to kind of jump through, um, permissions that you probably need to get. And all of that stuff just kind of takes time. You know, um, other organizations have their processes. I've, I've met with some organizations where, you know, I'm waiting to get feedback or, or input on something that I've suggested or brought up to them. And I understand that they have to go through their appropriate channels. So I think, you know, that playing that waiting game, being patient right, is challenging. Well, that pretty much does it uh, for our topic of discussion today. And we like to end the program on something that we like to call Caring Corner. December is right around the corner, and the creators of Mercy Moments would like to remind you that it is Spiritual Literacy Month. So take some time off, find a good book, and learn more about your faith and spirituality. Also, December is Toy Safety Month. And according to the U.S. Consumer Product Safety Commission, there are more than 251,000 toy related injuries in the U.S. each year with 72% of those being children under the age of 15. So depending on the injury, call 911, take your child to the nearest emergency room, or seek out less emergent medical care. And finally, according to the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, proper hand washing can greatly reduce the frequency of certain illnesses and even eliminate the spread of one in five infectious diseases like the flu. So starting in December, please make proper hand washing a critical part of your overall hygiene ritual. We'd like to end the program today by reminding our listeners that our goal here at Mercy Moments is to promote local resources, awareness, and involvement. Therefore, if you have any comments related to past episodes or have suggestions for future programs, please contact us at T-A-C-E-Y-L-E-R at Mercy.com. That's capital T-A-C-E-Y-L-E-R at mercy.com. 
Once again, I'd like to thank my guest, Sophia Carter, for being here. You can listen to Mercy Moments on True Chat via Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, or anywhere else fine podcasts are found. For Mercy Moments, Mercy Health Urbana Hospital, and True Chat, I'm your host, T. Allen Sealer. And I'm Sophia Carter. Thanks for listening today. Stay healthy, Ohio.